Welcome to this tutorial request in which we will be exploring ragdolls. Now this will be a very basic look into ragdolls. There are a lot of depth into this area when it comes to it. There are like uh, ragdolls, basic ragdolls, what we're going to be looking at today. You have active ragdolls, you have physical animations. There's a lot of different things and cool things you can do with ragdolls, but we're just going to be talking about the very basics and uh, discuss a little bit of how it works. So let's just jump into it. Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So this is what we will be creating today. We have a very simple uh, ragdoll state that we can enter. And in later videos, we will uh, be exploring more advanced ragdoll techniques and such, but this is very simple and basic. And we just have this very simple uh, character with a basic ragdoll uh, state that it can enter whenever it's, for example, running into boxes of death, like death, like this one, which uh, causes it to die. So it enters a ragdoll state essentially. So yeah, that's what we will be creating today. Here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4.27. Now, this is just a basic third person character uh, project essentially. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we open up our third person character and let's uh, create an event for uh, keyboard E. So when we press keyboard E, we want to do the ragdoll. So let, to make this a little bit more uh, modularized let's create a custom event place our ragdolling in here so let's say enter ragdoll and on the pressing of e we just go enter ragdoll that's not what i wanted like so now entering ragdoll can be done in a multitude of different ways depending on what kind of effect you want to do one of the simpler ones is if you just take your mesh and you say uh, simulate physics. Like we've done in previous tutorials, you have seen how we've played around with boxes and stuff like that to simulate physics. And the same is applicable to a skeletal mesh. And like we discussed in a different tutorial, if you've seen it, a skeletal mesh is driven by uh, its physical constraints in the world. So if we were to look at our character's skeletal mesh over here, this is what it looks like. This character has a physics assets connected to it. If we go to, let's say we click browse and we go here, we can say we see we have here an SK mannequin physics asset. The physics asset you can double click to get into, or you can go from the skeletal mesh and you can click on physics over here and you get represented with this view which is essentially all the different bodies that make up our collision of our character if you have a character that doesn't have any bodies you can click regenerate bodies to uh, get some basic ones created they might, might not be great you might need to tinker with them to get them to working fine but all of these different bodies here have different uh, relationships to each other, how they're allowed to bend, twist and such things. So the, the pre-generated one for the UA mannequin is okay. So if we were to press simulate up here, for example, we can see how he will crumple together. And we can see that it's not going too crazy. Uh, it fell down in a fairly realistic way. And um, yeah, so it, it works for this case. Uh, this is a good place to check to see if your physical uh, assets are looking decent enough so it, it's acting like it's actually a character, right? Anyway, so this is what will be driving the ragdoll effect. Going to our character, if we were to just press E here and enter the ragdoll, what would happen was would be that our character just falls through the floor. It, its mesh doesn't know how to interact with the world. Now there are a few different ways we can approach this with this specific solution. We can go to our mesh and we can go and say our collision presets should be changed to, uh, we can go to custom and we can say collisions enabled physics only, for example, 
uh, compiling and saving and now doing the same thing you can see now that our character sort of crumbles together and if we were to run against something like a staircase and do this he will have a fairly decent and looking animation when it comes to ragdolling uh, a different setting you can have on your character if you want to is to instead go of going with this course you can go to the uh, specific one that's called ragdoll right over here you can compile and save you can run and doing the same thing now you can see here ragdolls properly however there are some things to note here immediately and i to visualize this i want to do this i want to go to our capsule component and i want to find the checkbox that says hidden in game because uh, depending on if you've seen my beginner tutorials you would know about this but if you do not know then this is how a character works we have a capsule component let's make this bigger so it's maybe more visible we have this capsule component which is actually the character and the mesh itself isn't what we're driving when we're walking around the mesh is getting, get, is getting its animation from our movement of our capsule making it look good essentially but what happens when we are pressing uh, entering ragdoll state is that we're detaching our character mesh from our capsule we can still move around with our capsule as you can see and that's just it we have detached our our mesh to make it simulate which means that our capsule component is longer co connected to it so we can still move around Something else that you might want to see is that if we were to do something like run up against a wall and fall, you can see that the character is entering a state of like being still here. But if I was to start moving around, you can see that the character is also moving around. And this is because it's still getting animation information from its animation blueprint, so it's still thinking that it should be trying to animate, so it's fighting with that against the ragdolling that it's set up to have as well. Now, a very hacky way to solve this solution, or, or to solve this, would be to disable inputs. Like so. Yeah, let's see, does it really need a reference? Let's see. No, it does not. So now you can see that it has crumbled and it doesn't get our animation. So this solves it but this is a super hacky way to like hide all the flaws and the repercussions of going into ragdoll but it's something you could do if that's all you're interested in if you're for example having a character and you're just ragdolling when it's dead you're not supposed to be moving around with it anyway so in that case it might be useful but in many other cases this is a bad way to handle this anyway this is the basic of a ragdoll now let's make something fun out of this so we can uh, i have created a box over here this box is a very simple actor it just has a cube for visual representation and a collision box outside of it that's uh, narrowly extending outside of the the limitations of the mesh uh, to detect uh, information if actors are uh, interacting with it and we've created a component begin overlap and we're just saying that the other actor should be getting 100 damage if it's entering it that's all that this actor does now what we can do is we can go to our third person character and we can go to the event any damage and we can do something like this from here we can create a very simple hit point system so let's create a variable called hp and we can compile and save we can put a value for this let's say 100 now it happens to be that the box will do 100 damage which is exactly this so if any hit point uh, at 100 or less would work for this specific test then because what we're going to do is we're going to get the hit points we're going to set the hit points we're going to set them to the hit points minus whatever damage we're getting in and after that we're just going to be making a very simple check to see is our hit points less than or equal to zero and if it is we can consider ourselves dead 
and in that case we can enter ragdoll like so so if we were to bring out this mesh now into the world we can place it anywhere like so we run into it we fall over we die in a very humorous way here apparently so now we have something we can play around with so we can have this like a box of death that's uh, going around and uh, causing havoc to so you have to avoid hitting it and then if you get knocked into it you you immediately die for example so that's one way you could easily uh, implement ragdoll into some kind of logic and have some fun with it hopefully you found this video helpful if you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.